Hello, friends, and welcome to episode number 35 of Nostalgia Talk. Yes, I said that correctly. 35. Here we are, 35 episodes. I'm James, and before I get into this one, as usual, I have some things I'd like to say. In the long time that I haven't been doing Nostalgia Talk, and I'm very sorry about that, I'm working two jobs, and this is really more of an activity. Uh, So I do apologize for my hiatus. I can't guarantee how often this is going to be, but I will do my best. But in the period of time that I haven't been doing Nostalgia Talk, we've missed a few birthdays of past guests. So I would like to wish happy belated birthday to Sesame Street vocal music director Paul Rudolph, actor Juju Papaye, and Canadian puppeteer Tim Gosley from Fraggle Rock. So to the three of you guys, happy belated birthday. And now on with the show, joining me for the 35th episode of Nostalgia Talk is Justin Shankaro. Greetings. Thank you, James. Thanks for having me on. It's pretty special. 35 episodes is great. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, let's let's have some fun and talk nostalgia. I love it. Nice. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, Justin has had quite a career as an actor on, sorry if I'm making you feel old, an actor on TV in several 90s, 2000s shows. You'd probably know him best as Simon on Erie, Indiana. Sorry, I just had to look at where I had that listed here. Matthew Brock in Picket Fences. He was Eddie in Lloyd in Space. He was the voice of Charlie Brown at one point. And if you're a Nickelodeon kid like me, you'd probably know him best as Harold Berman on Hey Arnold, one of my favorite shows from when I was a kid and still one now. I was just saying to Justin before we started recording that um, it wasn't until very recently that I realized, oh my God, I used to watch the show because Nickelodeon was re-airing it here in Canada during the first lockdown. And I just would, would watch it nonstop. I was, it was on weekends. And it still is. But Nickelodeon Canada, you have to subscribe to it, unfortunately. And now I have Nick Plus on Amazon Prime, so I don't have to worry about that stuff. now. I can, and I have the complete series of Hey Arnold on DVD. So that's pretty lucky, too. Awesome. 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 Well, for a little, uh, for throwing a little Harold, why not to start the show? Hey, Arnold, come here, I'll pound you. Ha, 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 ha. Hey Harold, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's Harold's real voice when he's not on TV. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So let's, as as you had put it, let's talk nostalgia. Cool. All right. So first thing I want to know is what inspired you to want to get into acting. You know, I actually was. My parents had a bakery in Palos Verdes, which is in Los Angeles. And I used to go in there as a kid and I, I guess a lot of customers thought I was cute and they told my parents they should get me an agent. So it wasn't (laughs) actually my initial inclination to get into acting. My parents thought it might be interesting and fun for me. So they got me involved in it and I just loved it. My first commercial I got was for Mattel, which was a toy company. And they put me in a harness and I was flying around in the commercial. And then there was a whole table with free snacks and candy called a craft service table. So I was just, I immediately got the acting bug and that was it. I was off to the races. So the acting bug for you is basically, oh, there's free food here. Exactly. (laughs) I love that. I love that. (laughs) So what was your first ever acting role that got you the free snacks? (laughs) I mean, my first job was when I was six um, and it was for a Mattel commercial. That was my first job. And Then I went on to do many commercials and some guest appearances on television shows like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Who's the Boss, uh, Home Improvement, many shows. And the first big series I got was in 1991 with Erie, Indiana. Hmm. You mentioned the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and uh, I was kind of wondering about that because I am a huge fan of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I know the theme song top to bottom. Nice. Uh, Somebody I work with said, you're really good. There are people who just know the first verse of it or just right. a few words out of nowhere but i actually know it top to bottom and so does my cousin because she was a watcher of that show so i'm wondering cool. when you were on the fresh prince of bel-air was will smith funny you know it's interesting will smith to me was not the nicest guy at the time i mean it, granted he was only a 19 year old kid who was a multi-millionaire and became famous from this television show so he wasn't that friendly I've heard, and I've never worked with him since, but I've heard 
in the last 20 years, he's supposed to be a wonderful guy. So mm -hmm. not nothing against Will Smith because I've heard he's fabulous. But back then, he was not the friendliest. Understandable, he was a 19-year-old kid who was super rich. But my best experience actually on the show was the rest of the cast was incredibly friendly. And on the episode I was on, Evander Holyfield was also on. Evander Holyfield was the heavyweight world champion, boxing champion at the time. And that nice. was really nice. Yeah, he was, he was very cool, very nice. And I remember he showed up in a full black leather suit, black leather pants, a black leather t-shirt, and a black leather jacket. And I thought that was the coolest thing I'd seen. <laughs> that, that's amazing that you yeah. got to see that. That, that was pretty cool. And what about on Home Improvement? Was Tim Allen funny at all? Because I'm a big Toy Story fan. And of course, I would know Tim for Buzz Lightyear. Tim Allen is very funny. Yes. Uh, I didn't interact that much with Tim. I hung out mostly with the kids, um, Zach and, and, and Jonathan. But um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's a very funny guy. Super funny. Mm. Have you ever watched Last Man Standing? I haven't, but I've heard it's good. Is it it's, good? Even my family enjoys it. <laughs> really? Yeah. He's hilarious. I mean, Tim Allen is really funny. Oh, yeah. He, his career has gone to infinity and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I couldn't help it. <laughs> That's great. That's great. You're right. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I mentioned in the intro, uh, another very popular voice role that you did besides Harold and Eddie was, of course, as Charlie Brown, who is one of the most popular cartoon characters in the world, really. Like, you know, how, how far do you have to go to even hear his name? Like you could go on the street and meet someone named Charlie Brown and the, because it's, because Charlie is a common first name and Brown is a common last name, but I'm right. sure that if you ever meet someone named Charlie Brown, the only thing you'll be thinking of is, um, the comic character. Absolutely. What was it like to voice such an iconic character? It was great. I, it was truly a thrill. I was very, you know, I feel very fortunate to have been. Uh, one of the voices for Charlie Brown. It's an illustrious group of people that have done it. And I did it for a year and a half at the time. I did the Get Met commercials. Get Met, it pays. And also a couple of the animated cartoons as Charlie. And it was wonderful. It was just fun and neat and a uh, fabulous opportunity to be part of what an iconic role and iconic uh, series with Peanuts. Mm, nice yeah and they're so funny too they are <laughs> do you have a favorite uh since we're talking about peanuts do you have a favorite charlie brown moment at all well i mean it's got to be the the christmas special <laughs> the christmas special for me oh, is, yeah. is the is the top of the top but frankly they're all wonderful i i i, I love them all awesome yeah how could you not <laughs> right <laughs> mm. Uh, so eventually, uh, you were talking about landing the role of, uh, Simon in Erie, Indiana. How did that come about? Like, did you hear about yes. it? Were you asked to audition about it? Yes. My agent sent me out on the audition and I ended up having to go on 12 auditions for the role, which was a huge amount. I had to go see the casting director and the director and the producers many times. And then the production company and the studio and the network, it was quite a lengthy process, but in the end, I got the role and it was my most favorite role that I've ever done. It was just a, such a fun experience. Awesome. Wow. That's, that's quite the statement. Most favorite role you've ever done. That's incredible. Yes. Yeah. I loved it. It was a great cast, uh, amazing crew. We just had a blast every single day it was a new adventure and I loved it. I have to be honest, I've never actually seen that show. Of course, I, as I said before, I mostly know you as Harold, but right. um, I, I did look it up uh, when I was doing my research for this interview, and I was wondering if you uh, had any interaction with Joe Dante, the creative consultant yeah, for that show. Yeah, of course. Show. Yeah, Joe directed the first episode, and he was one of the producers on the show. I've run into Joe here and there over the years. And oh, nice. Of course, he's an iconic director, right? The, the Burbs, Gremlins, one of the best of all times. And he oh, was yeah. great to work with. Just very sweet, wonderful guy. Mm, one of my very favorite film directors. Nice. Awesome. I probably shouldn't be saying that on such a public thing, but I, being a recently finished film student and now I'm working in film, that's what my two jobs are. Oh, I, uh, <laughs> 
it you know i i really do look up to a lot of directors like joe dante and they, like directors from my childhood basically yeah i got no, to Joe. i mean is i think it's great he's one of the greatest directors of all times i'm i'm there with you oh yeah and then you got to uh work on a series that well, i i don't know if it was before or after erie indiana but another very popular live action role that you did was as matthew brock in picket fences which yep, is that, that was right after erie so i went to go work on that show for four and a half years and that was a big show we won a bunch of emmy awards golden globes and i worked with don Cheadle, tom scarrett kathy baker lauren holly a lot of fabulous actors and great talented directors and producers it was terrific oh i love don Cheadle. i didn't know he was on that show yeah he's great i just saw him in uh, space jam a new legacy Yes, I did some voices in Space Jam, the Space Jam 2 movie. Really? I just yep. did a chat with one of the, um, excuse me, with one of the uh, animators from that. Awesome. Mm. And I interviewed uh, Bob Bergen. Do you know him? Uh, Bob, yeah. Bob's very talented. He's been around forever. Bob is terrific. Oh, yeah. He was actually the first guest to agree to come on the, to come on the podcast. And, nice. Uh, he's big. He's great. Oh yeah, and he's so funny too. Like I, yeah. I, like I, I always love hearing him do Porky and Tweety right. and and Marvin. Yeah, he's an icon for sure. What did you do in Space Jam too? Like background voices? Yes, uh, I did a bunch of background voices. So I can't tell you which of the characters I did, but you know, I I probably did twenty or thirty of the different voices. Okay, w were most of those like in the basketball scene? Yes. Okay, I'll have to yep. see it again and listen for your voice. All right, cool. Very cool. Did you like the movie? I cried. <laughs> yeah, it's a great movie. Space Jam 1 came out before I was even born, but it was one of the first movies I ever saw. And I remember nice. going to the theater for Space Jam 2, and I'm like, oh my God, I cannot believe that this is happening. It was like, I'm, I felt like a, uh, a friend of mine said I was like a kid at Christmas. Nice. That's <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, eventually, uh, animated uh, roles came up for you. Uh, were you interested in doing voiceover while you were still doing live action stuff? Yes, yes, I loved okay. it. It's just a really fun to go and be able to perform at the studio uh, in front of the mic. And it's just a great experience. So I was doing it all concurrently while I was doing live action. Okay. And um, another big role for you was as Eddie, uh, was his last name Norton, I think? Yes, from Lloyd in Space. Yes. Yes. I, I must have watched Lloyd, blah, 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 Lloyd, I almost said Lord, Lloyd yeah. in Space back in the day because I it looked familiar, but I, I don't really re remember any episodes from it, uh, which is kind of weird. I think we did it for two seasons on Disney, okay. and it was a great show, really fun. I played, uh, I played Lloyd's best friend. I was Eddie. Mm -hmm. And it was a really cute show, very well done, kind of a little bit after recess. And it was, yeah, it was great. I don't know. Also, if you ever watched Life with Louie that was on Fox, I did no, a couple I voices haven't on watched that. that. No. Oh, it was a great show. You, you got a lot of cartoons you got to watch. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so um, could, uh, would you mind giving our listeners a little uh, taste of Eddie? Sure. Yeah. My voice is a little hoarse right now. Sorry. I lost a little bit over the weekend, but, uh, Eddie was like, Hey Lloyd, come on. Are we going to go out or what? I mean, we were supposed to go see a bunch of people at the mall, but you're not, you're kind of slacking. If I didn't know that was you, I would have swore that was Jason Marsden. <laughs> really? Oh my God. You two sound so much alike. I've met Jason before. Yeah. Jason's great. Jason's wonderful. That's funny. I've never heard that before. That's cool. Uh, so for all of the nostalgic listeners out there who loved Lloyd in space, it's so, again, it's so crazy that I don't remember it, but recognize it. But I'm sure a lot of the regular listeners out there probably remember the series very well. Yes. Um, do you have any favorite moments from Lloyd in space that you'd like to share? In terms of favorite moments, I don't necessarily recall a specific one. I just recall that every moment we worked on it was wonderful. <laughs> That's a it good was answer. A great experience. Yeah. And it was, you know, 20 some odd years ago. Uh, I do remember when we were wrapping it up that I was working with Bill Foggerbody. He played, he was one of the characters on the show. 
and he was telling me that he was, had just done a new pilot on Nickelodeon sponge something. He couldn't remember the name of it. And I was like, Oh, okay. And he's like, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, SpongeBob, he plays Patrick. <laughs> it's so crazy that he couldn't remember the name of it at the time, but yet it's one of the things that he's most well known for. Of course. Of and, course. Yeah. And also as uh, Dauber in the TV series coach, I don't know if That's you've right. ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I grew up watching coach. That's, you know, a show that I grew up watching. So it was cool to be able to work with him. Super nice guy. Mm. And then, of course, he went on to do SpongeBob, which is almost as big as Booking the Simpsons. I mean, it's been on forever. Yeah, I've, I, I introduced some of my friends to Coach, or I tried to tell them about it. And I say to them, oh, yeah, Hayden, which is the main character, for anyone who doesn't know, has this assistant coach named Dauber. And Dauber is currently Patrick on SpongeBob. And if you watch an episode, you can tell it's the same guy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember when I was first introduced to it, it was in uh, New York when I went there with my family. And um, I saw, I, I woke up to sitcom laughter and I hear my dad mention Craig T. Nelson. I'm a big Craig T. Nelson fan. So I was like, what are you, what the hell are you watching that is Craig T. Nelson in it? Yeah. I said, it's a show called Coach. Uh-huh. And um, then I see Bill Fagerbachy's name in the credits. And I was like, wait, that's Patrick from SpongeBob. So I was like, <laughs> which, which one is he? Which which character is he? The super tall guy. Yeah, and then I see him, and then I hear the voice, and I'm like, that guy, that's Patrick from SpongeBob. And my mom's like, oh, he sounds like him too. <laughs> yeah, he's a nice guy. He's a big guy. He's tall. You know, most actors are not that tall. So when you see a very tall one, it's kind of like, oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so... After, oh, sorry, not after, before Lloyd in Space, I saved uh, this, this one for, you know, the, the biggest part of the podcast, because I feel like a lot of the Q&A is based around this. But um, one of the biggest roles any, that you have as a voice actor, and again, the one I know you best for is, of course, as Harold Berman on Hey Arnold. Yes, definitely. Iconic show, wonderful character, just a blast. Very, you know, lucky and grateful to have worked on the show. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it just goes down in history. It's one of the best cartoons of all time. Oh, I can attest to that. Yes. <laughs> I second that statement. It is one of the best <laughs> cartoons of all time. Absolutely. So, so uh, did you audition for the role of Harold or was there a certain character that you wanted, to, that you wanted, uh, like, were you, did you always want to do Harold? Well, I was uh, sent out for my agent to audition for Harold. And when I got to the audition, they gave me the script along with a drawing of what the character looked like. And I just immediately kind of thought back to my childhood and being bullied a little bit and what the bullies kind of sounded like and looked like. And that's how I came up with the voice for Harold and just worked with Craig, who's the creator of the show. He was there in the audition and we worked back and forth and fortunately i heard back a few days later that i booked the part so that was great nice so so that's where harold came from like your like the voice came from your own past yes it just came from my own past and kind of imagination okay Uh, i told a lot of people i was talking to harold from hey arnold and they're like well which one was that and i said the whiny character (laughs) 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 which is how i always Uh, yeah I used to think he was kind of um as a kid I remember thinking that he looked kind of mean and same with Helga because she's got that freaking unibrow right exactly (laughs) um but then when I recently went back and watched it like there was one episode where I think Harold was outside not not really doing anything just existing basically and this lady dumps water on him for no reason yeah and I was like, oh, come on. He, was, he wasn't doing anything wrong. Like, right. Yeah. Like that's- Harold, was, Harold was a big softy. He had a huge heart and he had a bit of a tough exterior to kind of cover up being made fun of. So therefore, he kind of, you know, became a little bit of a bully to Arnold and to other kids on the playground. But the truth is, once you got to know him, he was a big teddy bear. Mm. My favorite Harold moment, I've got several, but one of my favorite uh, moments with Harold, that's, it, it's, in a, it's in an episode that's not really centered around him, but um, it, I think basically um, Helga was around the, the boys playing baseball, 
And uh, Harold's like, why don't you play with us? Oh, yeah, you're not really a girl. <laughs> and he gets That's everyone to go, Helga's not a girl. Helga's <laughs> not a girl. <laughs> How mean. That's <laughs> <laughs> pretty mean. It's funny, though. Mm. <laughs> one of my very favorite episodes that was centered around Harold. Actually, one of the one of the first ones I saw when the pandemic happened was um, – Another one that involved Harold and Helga very, uh, very much in the plot, but it was they all took an aptitude test and Eugene was asked to collect the tests. Uh -huh. And because Eugene is so clumsy, he accidentally slips and he's like, OK, whose test is whose? And he switches Helga's and Harold's and then right. Harold's test results are well, Helga's test results that are given to Harold are really, really good. Right. And Mr. Simmons says, you could consider all kinds of amazing careers. And, you know, that gives him a lot more confidence. Yep. And Helga's like, oh, I'm just stupid. <laughs> and then Mr. Simmons realizes, oh, my God, I've made a horrible mistake and goes right. to the, the Pataki's home, to which Big Bob is not interested. It's like, OK, get out of here. I'm trying to watch my Bieber commercial. Right. Which, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible father uh, i i hate to say it but big bob pataki i i know he's a cartoon character and i know it was the point so this probably is not offensive but big bob pataki has got to be one of the worst television fathers in the history of the world <laughs> ah, you heard it here you heard it here that's a great statement it's true yes and when he and when mr simmons goes to the berman's home harold is really upset because he thinks he's dumb and mr simmons says no 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 no. you're not dumb you had more potential because you believed in yourself and right. that was an incredible thing the other harold moment that i really liked was um where uh it was his bar mitzvah yes and i think he was that's my to... favorite episode of all time Oh, nice. Uh, I was wondering, how was it established that Harold would be Jewish? I don't know when it was established. I think what happened was I had recently had my own bar mitzvah. I'm Jewish. Oh, okay. And that makes I think sense. Craig, yeah, I think Craig was sort of intrigued by that, the creator of the show. And so he came right, to Craig me Bartlett. Said, yeah, Craig Bartlett. And he yeah, said, I've, ta I've talked to him a couple of times recently. Awesome. Yeah, Craig is the best. And I, Craig came and came to me and said, I'm going to write an episode about Harold having a bar mitzvah. And I was like, that's great. And he said, but I'm not Jewish. And I know you've had a bar mitzvah. Can you come back to me with some Jewish prayers so we can put them in the episode? I said, sure. Oh. So I'm, you know, Jewish, but I'm not very religious and I'm not the best with all the prayers. So I went to a friend of mine who's very religious, one of my good friends at the time. And I asked him for some of the prayers and he gave me a bunch of the prayers and I gave him to Craig. We did the episode. The episode comes out on television. My friend calls me and says, what is wrong with you? I said, what are you talking about? He said, you did the wrong prayers. All wrong. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I said all the wrong prayers in the episode. Nobody knew really except for him, but it was pretty funny to me. Yeah, that, that was a pretty good episode. Um, Another another Harold moment that I really like is um, where and, and it and it also had a little bit to do with uh, him being Jewish, but it was um, and that's interesting that you're Jewish, by the way. Um, yeah. I, I don't want to sound assumptionative, but um, I kind of thought when I wrote down that question, I thought maybe it came out of real life because I know yeah. that a lot of writers like to do that. I definitely do when I'm writing. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, that, right. that, but yeah, that's very interesting that uh, yeah. that it came out of yourself. Um, but, uh, one of my very favorite episodes that involved Harold, it might've actually, it might actually be my favorite with him, but it was, um, he had stolen a pork from the butcher shop and yep. the rabbi was pissed off about that for two reasons. Number one, it's against Jewish religion to eat pork apparently. <laughs> right. And, uh, it's against the law to steal. So his punishment was that he had to work in the butcher shop much to right. the owner's dismay, but Harold really enjoyed himself and wanted to continue working there and the owner was like no i don't want you here you're just a friggin' troublemaker and then right. he realized okay i need him yeah so what i'm what i'm wondering about that is um if harold had aged properly and it, by that i'm saying they were nine when the show started that was 25 years ago god that makes me feel so old and <laughs> uh, so if harold had aged properly 
what do you think he'd be up to now? He'd be the butcher, no doubt about it. You think he'd be owning it? Absolutely. He'd be the owner of the butcher shop. Mm. I think that Harold loved being a butcher, enjoyed the process, and it kind of fit very well with his character. I think he'd be running the local butcher shop. Mm. Do you think he'd be married to Big Patty? Very likely. <laughs> very likely. He and Big Patty would be married and that they'd have little Harold's and little Patty's running around. <laughs> <laughs> For any of the listeners who don't know what it is we're talking about, there was an episode where Harold developed a crush on this girl who everyone found was intimidating named Big Patty. And um, he really did uh, see the best in her. She's like, people really just look at me like like I'm scary. And as I said before, as a kid, I always thought that Harold and Helga both were kind of scary looking. <laughs> <laughs> the unibrow throws me off. Yeah. It is a little scary. You're right. Mm -hmm. So when you did Hey Arnold, the movie, which I've got to watch now, now I'm tempted to watch it. I remember when the second one came out on TV, but I didn't see the first one. As yeah. I said before, my parents don't even remember me watching that show. <laughs> but um, when you did Hey Arnold, the movie, you're doing the same character, but you're doing it for a much bigger production than a TV show. Uh, did it feel different doing Harold in a film than it would do for a TV show? Not really. I don't right. believe so because we filmed it at the same location that we did the TV show and it was the same experience really for us. I think probably more from the writing producing angle was a lot more in depth and a lot more work from their point of view. But for me as a voiceover actor, it was pretty much the same thing. It was just a cooler experience because I remember it premiered at Paramount. They had a red carpet. We walked nice. down the red carpet. That was, we, you know, we all went to the movie premiere together. That was a really neat thing. So I, I love that. But in terms of the actual physically doing the role, it was pretty much the same. Okay. And flash forward to 15 years later, you got to long after Hey Arnold ended, you got to do the role of Harold again for the jungle movie. What was it like yes. to be asked to come back? Well, it was, it was at first, it was a testament to the fans for us to come back. It was really the fans that made it happen, which is amazing. They put together a big petition on Facebook, over a hundred thousand Hey Arnold fans signed it. And Nickelodeon knew they had to, you know, come up with the jungle movie. I probably um, was one of the fans that signed it. <laughs> that's great. I'm thrilled. Thank you. That's very cool. So yeah, it was, it was so fun. I had to go on an audition again. We all had to go in an audition because they wanted to make sure that we could continue to do the voices we did. So that was a bit nerve wracking. Uh, but I listened to Harold a bunch and, you know, studied it and went in there. And fortunately it was, it worked out well. And it was great to go back in and re-record. I did record with a new Sid and a new uh, Stinky. So it was kind of funny because they were these little kids that were probably nine or 10 or 11 years old. And, you know, clearly I'm an adult. So, and we and all, I, I wonder if they watched the show to get ready. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they watched the show because they wanted to kind of see how the voices sounded, how the tone of the show was, but it was kind of neat to, to be in the room with these little kids doing the parts. It was fun. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Rugrats has just been rebooted on Paramount Plus, and yep. from what I've heard, it's doing very, very well. It's crazy. Uh, I always tell people that when I was a kid watching TV, watching cartoons, I wanted to be, when I grew up, I wanted to be either a Rugrat or a Powerpuff Girl. <laughs> and I'm a guy. <laughs> that's funny. That's great. <laughs> Unfortunately, I am not in the Rugrats reboot, and that's okay. But uh, <laughs> so... Not all dreams come true. Just going to say, <laughs> sorry to crush anyone's <laughs> goals out there, but um, with the success of the Rugrats reboot, do you think maybe a Hey Arnold reboot would ever be possible? I think it's definitely possible. I would love that. I hope that the fans, you know, scream loud and, and demand that we have a Hey Arnold reboot and a new series. They brought Rugrats back and it's doing well. Like you mentioned, let's bring Hey Arnold back. And they brought iCarly back, which is one I used to watch back. That's in the day. right. And that's a big hit too, right? Oh yeah. Like I, I watch it weekly with, um, 
iCarly was like so popular when I was a tween and I never missed an episode. Me and my friends, we'd have like if, if they were coming over for dinner, I'd be like, hey, a new episode of iCarly. Or, Do you want to watch that while we eat? And that's what we did. Uh, unfortunately, sadly, we're all grown up now. So <laughs> <laughs> but for old time's sake, why not? You know, we should, Absolutely. We should do that with the reboot. I, I tend to watch it with my sister a lot. So, yeah, a little nostalgia. It's fun. Yeah. Hence the name of this series, Nostalgia Talk. Love it. Great, great mm-hmm. title. It's mm-hmm. fun. So you mentioned your favorite episode of Hey Arnold was the Bar Mitzvah one. Yes. Do you have any other favorite episodes? Well, you named another one. The Butcher is is another one of my favorite episodes. Love it because it's just so sweet. You know, Harold begrudgingly has to go work at the butcher shop. He doesn't want to do it. And he gets in trouble from the rabbi. By the way, do you know who played the voice of the rabbi? Uh, I th- think it was Elliot Gould. Yes, correct. Elliot Gould. Okay. Very, very famous actor. It was who was married to Barbara Streisand and was a huge actor in the 1970s. Oh, Great yeah. Great guy. Great mm-hmm. guy. So he played the rabbi. And it was just a great, wonderful episode. There was such an arc to Harold's character in that episode because he, you know, is mischievous, gets in trouble, steals the sausage, which he shouldn't eat to begin with, and it's wrong to steal, but grudgingly has to go to the butcher shop, which he doesn't want to do, and then soon finds out that he really likes the work and likes learning and enjoys it. So mm. it was, it was, I mean, so many wonderful morals in that episode and a great episode to do. Mm, lovely. Yeah. Now, since you did uh, Hey Arnold, the uh, Jungle movie, you know, you ha- it brought back a lot of past cast members, many of which I would love to have on here. Like it brought back Francesca and Andy. Uh, is anyone I'm missing? You, of course. I think Olivia. Okay. Uh, who played Phoebe. Hmm. She, right? Or no, she, I, like... I think that was Andy McAfee. Oh, okay. Olivia yeah. played she, Rhonda. Okay, yeah. I, I, I used to get Phoebe, Lila, and Rhonda mixed up when I started re-watching the show. So the way I remember Phoebe is just has a very high, uh, if, if you know who I mean by Prairie Dawn from Sesame Street, sounds a lot like Prairie Dawn. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yes, um, a lot of us came back. I was you know, fortunate to play Harold. And then even Torin, who was one of the Arnolds, and Jamil, who played original Gerald, they both made cameos in the movie, even though they didn't play the new Arnold and Gerald. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. a little, that's something nice for the fans who are nerds like me who know their names. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And Gerald and I, uh, Jamil and I are very good friends. We've been friends for, since we did the show for forever. Mm. And yeah, I think probably they brought back almost everybody that worked on the show originally, even to reprise their role or to give them a small part and in the movie so they could be in it. Mm. Do you still keep in touch with all your former cast members? Yeah. I mean, not all of them, you know, some people it's like you, you kind of run into them every now and then, and some you become very close friends with like Jamil who played Gerald is one of my very good buddies. Oh, nice. Yeah. Lovely. So do you prefer on screen acting or voice acting? I love them both. I don't. That's a good answer. Down. That's a good yeah. answer. <laughs> I've, I, I'm happy to do both. I love voiceover work. I'm doing a new cartoon on Disney Plus called Spidey and His Amazing Friends. Oh, Very, really? Yeah, it's great. It just launched last Friday, oh, and cool. we just got picked up for a second season, which is exciting. Oh, congratulations! Thank you. I play Rhino, and uh, Rhino is a blast, and it's a great cartoon. I highly recommend it. Um, and you know, I do a lot of voiceover work, but I still do on camera work, which I totally adore, love and have a blast doing. So yeah, I'm, I'm game for any of them. Awesome. It's yeah. crazy that you mentioned, uh, doing Spider-Man because I recently did a, I, from time to time I do live trivia nights on this YouTube channel and, uh, the podcast, Facebook page, link in the description, facebook.com slash nostalgia talk, YouTube, go like, and follow and comment for more. And a nice. uh, little plug there. there you and go. from time to time I do live trivias and the last one was Marvel. Awesome. And for anyone wondering what the next uh, trivia night's going to be, Justin and I have been talking about uh, Nickelodeon 
that's that's probably going to be the next one. So keep your ear to the ground for news as to when that might be. I've got a lot going on, but I will do my best to make sure that you hear news about that soon. So stay tuned. That's exciting. Here, I got a good trivia question for you right now oh. that you can include in the next one. So as a fan of Nostalgia Talk, if you've been listening, I just had a recent guest on who happened to play Harold and Hey Arnold. What new Marvel cartoon is he currently doing on Disney Plus? Give me the name of the cartoon and the role he's playing. And the role he did in Hey Arnold. And the role he did in Hey Arnold. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Self-promotion there. <laughs> there you go. So well, if you're listening now, you're going to get that answer correct. <laughs> well, dead giveaway right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it is time for my least favorite part of Nostalgia Talk, the time to wrap up. Justin, thank you very much for coming to Nostalgia Talk. Is there anything you'd like to say to finish? Absolutely, James. This was so fun. Thanks for having me. For everybody who's listening, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at twitter.com backslash Justin Shankro, Instagram.com backslash Justin Shankro. I'm on TikTok a little bit, TikTok.com backslash Justin Shankro. And tune in to Spidey and His Amazing Friends. It's on Disney Plus on Fridays, uh, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. Super cute. I play Rhino. And just uh, check me out and DM me. I'm happy to chat. And thanks for listening today. This has been a blast. Oh, thank you very much. It's been a, it's been great having you here after watching you on. T it's crazy. Uh, ever since Nostalgia's Talk started, I've been doing this since October. Ever since it started, pe people always ask me, uh, even recently, you know, I get a lot of uh, who's somebody that you'd like to have on your show. I never name names because for one thing, if I, they might be hard to contact. Right. Another, another thing, it could fall through. Uh, right. Or I just may never hear anything back and people would expect it. And I, I, I'd hate to get people's hopes up. But ever since I started Nostalgia Talk, I've always wanted to interview somebody who has been on Hey Arnold. And I finally got my wish. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo. So well, thank I'm you. grateful to be the one that did it. That's great. Thank well, you. Hopefully there will be more. I'd love to interview a lot more uh, cast members from Hey Arnold. So keep your ear to the ground for news about who's going to be on the next Nostalgia Talk. You never know who it's going to be. And I will see you next time. Peace. Cool.